Hi guys and welcome to this video on weighted graphs, networks and the shortest path problem, part of the general maths 1 and 2 course, or in fact any course that's got those words in the title. How are ya? My name's Darren from Maths Guru and it's really, really awesome to see you. Can you do me a favour before I start? Can you subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on TikTok? Why? Just to let me know you're watching. Turn off notifications if you need to. Trust me, I'm not going to spam you. It just, I'm sitting in a room. If you saw this room at the moment, it's more like a cupboard. I'm, be, I'm like Harry Potter. <sighs> but the point of it is, everyone out there is watching videos on people doing challenges and putting Mentos in Coke and all that type of stuff. I, I get it. That's funny as. But it would be nice to know that people are watching. And also, if you like the video, leave me a comment. Tell me what I'm doing well. Tell your mates, tell your teachers. I'm working through graphs, networks, and all that type of stuff, which is massively important for next year, for general maths in unit three and four. It goes a lot, lot deeper. So if you've got a good foundation now, awesome. Last thing from me, get your summary book. Get a summary book now because everything we talk about, if you put it in your summary book, you are never, ever going to fail this. All right, look, that's not really a guarantee, but I can't see how, if you've got all this stuff in your summary book, you can fail. But you don't have to write it down either. Why? Because at mathsguru.com, you can download all the stuff I write on, all the notes, and you can stick it in your summary book if you need to, all right? I can't do much more for you other than do the exam. And if you want to pay me $3.4 million, I will sit the exam for you as well. I know, very specific amount really, wasn't it? Now, in previous videos, we've looked at walks, paths, trails, cycles, circuits, oil and trails, oil and oh, we've done a lot really, haven't we? And all of this has some sort of foundation and it's now leading into the stuff we're going to do now. But uh, as I say here, believe it or not, I used to work in the post office. Yes, it was the worst job of my entire life. I hated it. Long story, but again, my boys turn around and say, don't tell the stories in your videos. No one gives a monkeys, just teach the maths. If you want to hear the video, let me know. Send me a message on TikTok and I will record the video and upload it. Trust me, it was the suckiest job of my life. I loaded mail onto a conveyor belt. <sighs> anyway, just thinking about it makes me grateful to be a teacher. But if I was to imagine I was actually going to be a postie on a round, as I've said before, and I want to deliver a lot of packages between St Kilda, Docklands, Richmond, and say Preston, there are lots and lots and lots of different routes I could take. I mean lots, because roads connect in all sorts of different ways. And if we go back to my idea of my GPS, how does my GPS know how to get me the best way from A to B? There must be an algorithm or some sort of way to do it. And in fact, there is. And it's called finding the shortest path between places. Now, that's a great, great subject and it goes much, much deeper. But if I look here, for example now, well, this here is a weighted graph, all right? Now, why is it called weight? Well, weight's a funny thing, isn't it? I stand on the scale and my scale literally laughs at me. I mean, it's, it's almost embarrassing, really. You can hear it groan as I get on. I know, I wear baggy clothes. Don't fat shame me. No, I'm joking. Fat shame away, all right? Yeah, I can deal with it. No, I can't, I'm too precious. But the point of it is, weights have some sort of number with them. Now, all of the graphs we've dealt with before, all of the diagrams we dealt with before were just vertices and edges, weren't they? Absolutely. But now we wanna start putting numbers on them, we call them a weighted graph. Well, again, it's maths, we don't wanna call it a weighted graph. Can we think of something better? Oh yeah, we call this a network, right? So because a weighted graph is modeling a real life situation, we're actually gonna use the word network. So let's have a look at the diagram again. What we now see is I've got town A, B, C, D, E, and F. So this could be my postal route I'm looking to go. I wanna go A, B, C, D, E, and F. I wanna go through all of them or maybe wanna go through none of them. What would the shortest path be to get around all of that? That's certainly one thing I could think about, but actually, what if I wasn't? What if I just wanted to find the quickest way to get from town A to town D, for example? Now, there are two main ways of doing this, okay? I'll talk about that in just a moment, but being able to read these numbers is important. Yes, yeah, so here's another example. We've seen it before in a previous video where we had gate and fern gully, we had the waterfall, we had a tree, we had a bridge, and we had G2. Now, in all of those situations, 
none of them had times of how long it's going to get or how long it takes to get between any of these places. So if we now have a look at here, for example here, if this is my gate one, if I wanted to go from gate one to Fern Gully, it's now going to take me eight minutes. That's really useful information. This is a network. It's a real life situation. So being able to read these things is, is huge. So what type of questions could they ask in an exam? Because this is all about an exam, isn't it? How long does it take to walk from the bridge directly to Fern Gully? All right, so can you find the bridge here? Yes. What is the best way to get to Fern Gully? Well, it's going to be down here. Yes. And in which case, that is going to take 12 minutes. Now, what I want you to do is say, well, could I have walked different ways to get to Fern Gully? Well, I could have done. I could have actually gone from the bridge back to the gate to Fern Gully. But would I do that? No, because to go from the bridge to the gate takes six minutes. To go from the gate to Fern Gully takes eight minutes, which in total would take 14 minutes. Well, that 12 minutes is the much better way to go, isn't it? Well, or I could go, was it quicker maybe to go from the bridge, he says, riding a G, to gate two to Fern Gully. Well, again, from the bridge to gate two was eight minutes. Again, why do I know that? Because that line there has got the eight minutes on it. Go, gate two to Fern Gully is 10 minutes, 18 minutes. So automatically by looking at this graph, I'm looking at the shortest path. In that situation, directly from B to F is 12 minutes. Let's try another example. How long does it take to walk from the old tree, so there's my old tree, to Fern Gully via the waterfall and the bridge? So I've got to go the tree to the waterfall, that's one way, the waterfall to the bridge, and then the bridge to Fern Gully. So in that situation, I would say 10 minutes to go from the tree to the waterfall, Add nine minutes from the waterfall to the bridge and 12 minutes to Fern Gully. Add those together gives me 31 minutes. Now, being able to read these things is awesome, but as I say, we may be asked to find the shortest path between two points. And as I've said here, there are two ways to do it. One is by inspection. And by rights, the general mass course should have me just teaching you by inspection. I'm gonna teach you some of the unit three and four course because once you get used to this algorithm and it's massively important, you will be a gun at this stuff. I'm gonna teach you Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, hopefully I spelled his name right there. I'm a bit worried that I haven't, but let's look at Dijkstra's algorithm, yes? First, now, what we've got to do here is this is always related to the shortest route between town C and town F. So in this situation, we've got town C and we've got town F. I want to find the shortest route. Now, why don't you stop the video and see if you can just look at it and find what the shortest route is, right? Can you look and find the shortest way from town C to town F? Hold on, I didn't just pause there. I was waiting to see whether you pause or not. But assuming you've done that, was it easy? Was that network relatively easy? Was there more than one way? Were you a little indecisive? Inspection's great for really, really simple networks, but again, wouldn't it be great if we had an algorithm? Now, an algorithm is just a set of rules that we follow that actually will help us with this. Now, I'm not gonna pretend that this is easy, guys. I'm sorry, it's not, that's not true. It is easy once you've understood the rules. So what I'm gonna do is do it once. If you don't understand it, rewind it and play it again. That's the advantage of having a video. Stop it, pause it, think about it, right? But this is an algorithm. It's just a set of rules that we follow to get to an answer. It doesn't have to make sense as such, but it sort of does. Okay, so in this situation here, because you wanna go from town C to town F, the start town, you put a zero, and I'm gonna put a box around it, because that means that's my start. I have traveled zero kilometers when I'm at town C. Every road that comes off of town C I'm going to write the distance it's taken to get there. Now, what I mean is to go from town C to town B along this road here is five kilometers. So at the moment, I'm gonna write a five, not with a box at the moment. The only other town out of C is that one there, which means I can get to town D in six kilometers. Having done that, I stop, and by that having exhausted all of the roads, I stop and I go, okay, which is my smallest value? Five. So the five, I'm gonna put a box around now because I can get from town C to B in the shortest possible way. Five kilometers or five whatever. Okay, 
When I've dialed a new box number, I start again. I now try and get to all of the different places from, in this situation, town B, adding on five to all of the numbers. So what I mean by that is, this road is coming off, it's seven, I'm gonna add that to the five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and I'm gonna write 12 here. Now what I'm really saying is, from town C, along through town B to town A is 12 kilometers. I'm not putting a box around it, I only put a box around the smallest number when I finished. So now I've got this road here. So I was at town B, which is five, plus the four to get to town E, gives me nine. Again, I'm not putting a square around it for this moment in time. I can get from town B to town D in 10, because the five plus the five gives me 10. Now, I'm not gonna write the 10 down funny enough because I've already got a smaller number. I can already get to town D in a quicker way. So that six remains. Have I now got all of the towns coming off of B? I have. I now look at my smallest number. Ah, in this situation it is six. I'm gonna put a box around it. If I put a box around it, what do I do? I start again, right? So every town that now comes off of D, I'm gonna go along here. So that's nine, I'm gonna add it onto the six, which means that's gonna be nine plus six is 15. Am I gonna write the 15 down? No, because I can actually get to E in nine kilometers. It's much easier than that way. So nah, that's not gonna work. What about town D to town A? Well, it was six plus the eight, which is gonna give me 14. Again, I'm not gonna write the 14, I mean, I could write the 14 down, but then I'd have to scribble it through because the 12 is there. Have I exhausted all the towns coming off of D? Yes, what am I gonna do? Find my smallest number. So what I've got here, I've got nine and I've got 12. There we go, so I'm gonna put nine. What have I done? Once I put the box around the number, what do I do? I look at all of the roads coming off of E. Well, in that situation, there's actually only one. Because in that, there, I've got nine plus the seven gives me 16. So that's 16. Now you might turn around and say, well, I found my answer. No, I haven't, because there may be other ways of doing it, yes? Remember, I only finish this when I've got boxes around all of my numbers. Right, so I've got a 12 and a 16. What's my smallest number? It's 12, put a box around it, and start again. How many roads have we got coming off? Well, I've got this road here. So 12 plus six gives me 18, but 18 there is too big. And as such, there's my final answer. Now again, I know that that's an algorithm and there are in my further three, four videos, sorry, general three, four videos, we've renamed the course, I will do lots more of these examples. I haven't done it yet, I will do that in a later video. But if you don't understand it, go back, watch it again. It's an algorithm. But now I can now say that the shortest to go from C to F is 16 kilometers. Now those of you who did that in your head, respect. If you can do it by inspection, awesome. Don't forget that was a relatively simple example. But Dijkstra allowed us to sort of come up with this to find the shortest path. And the good news is, if you get the algorithm right, you get it right every single time. And there are some challenging questions next year. And there we go, that's the end of this video. So let me see, what do we talk about? The shortest path problem, done. What else did we talk about? Um, networks, a network is a real world situation that has numbers on it. A weighted graph is basically weighted because it's got numbers on it. Well, there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. If you can, do me the honor, please, of subscribing and heading over to TikTok and following me, if you would. It just lets me know that people are watching. Let your mates know, let your teachers know, and hopefully I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. I'll see you again soon, and please stay safe.